Oh, this one's rich. This guy goes, poor people will have to get an actual job. Couldn't care less. <laughs> Unreal. Buckle up, boys. We had a fun one today. Uh, that one, if you're new here, welcome. All right, this one was from a video from the other day about the TikTok man. And I got a lot of these right here with like people like, get an actual job, loser. Okay, well, let's see all these poor people. I'm being sarcastic, okay, because a lot of people are struggling. Um, but we're going to see how easy it is to go get a real job. All right, this is going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> God, poor people. That's not good. Why are all of these places hiring, but like won't fucking hire someone 1400 1400 is the number of jobs i've applied to across linkedin indeed no Creek golf other recruiting sites and just by filling out those stupid accounts on individual company websites when i tell people this number they genuinely cannot believe it and then they do some stupid shit like recommend a book or like a seminar to watch about job applying and i'm like you think I haven't tried every tactic in the book? Cold emails, cold calls, hot emails, mildly warm, slightly cold in the center type emails. It took me six months to get my last job and that was around 700 applications. And I got lucky with that one because I went to the same school as the person who hired me. He's come. <laughs> okay, 1400, that sounds crazy, but this is actually a real thing, okay? And, uh, and to be fair, the last two jobs I've gotten before this became my job, whether you think this is a real job or not, I really don't care. Uh, cause most careers don't seem to be working out for people anyways. Uh, but I got those jobs because I knew someone who worked there or I knew the manager. So not what you know, who you know, that's a real thing. But this one's awesome. This is like an actual job recruiter talking about how a lot of these uh, jobs online are actually fake. And I thought this was just riveting. This is beautiful. Check this one out. Companies are saying that they're urgently hiring, but yet they're rejecting. Actually, no, they're not rejecting everyone. They're simply not hiring. I have to tell you this, but these jobs don't exist. I'm a tech recruiter um, and I get ghosted by my company and other agencies we work for and positions we try to fill 90% of the time. I'll have people get first round, second round, third round interviews, even to the point where, yeah, they're gonna figure out the financials and send them a job offer. That doesn't happen. There is no offer. All they do is they're trying to make it look like they're busy and it looks like they're hiring. And then for whatever reason at the end of the road, oh, it doesn't work out. I am literally being told now to don't worry about what hires I get, just worry about hitting my numbers. So that means all they care about is me submitting resumes and that's it. There's definitely something political going on that they're not disclosing on why they are doing this to begin with, but yeah, it's a load of bullshit. Unless you're a rock star and you agree to get underpaid 20 grand, you're not getting an offer. <laughs> I actually agree with that guy because technically, you know, you hear this stuff about everything's great. Job markets, obviously you don't hear that like from people, people, um, but you know, in the news and stuff like that, the trustworthy stuff. Um, but there's something to think to think about with that. Like, for real, that's kind of it's kind of odd. Um, if you're new here, I like to read comments from previous videos. Keep it light, keep it loose, keep it fun. You know, make it special for everybody. This person goes, uh, $25 is a joke now. What a time to be alive. God, you got you gotta love it. It gets even better than that because this this clip here coming up, this guy here, this this is still a real thing, and I honestly can't even believe that this is still an actual wage just considering why the fuck did i have a job interview at tj maxx the other day and then everything went well but the end he told me that they pay 12 dollars an hour and they get paid every week so i was like yeah in my head i'm like yeah i'm not taking that fucking job because like what the fuck and then i just got a call that i got the fucking job and why the fuck did i tell this man yes i really don't even know what the fuck to do because 12 dollars an hour i couldn't even wipe my ass with 12 dollars an hour what the fuck is that gonna do for me i don't know let me know what y'all think i should do shit i don't and I'm not laughing at the $12 an hour thing. I get it. TJ Maxx. I understand. Okay. Get a real job. Get a career. I get that. I get that. But just, just think about it though. A lot of jobs. I don't care if you're a full blown adult. Um, the $12 an hour thing is still real and it's awesome. It's spectacular. And I got to say, I'm loving it. Look, I'm just saying in 2008, I was making $10 an hour. 
no education, no skilled trades. It's fantastic. Things are moving in the right direction. Anyways, this guy, this guy go. This one's this one's hilarious. Anyone else sick and tired of this job market that we're currently in? Of course we're tired. I've applied to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of jobs at this point. I haven't found one job that asked for 10 years of experience for an entry level job. So when I filtered out and they asked me how much experience do I have, I told them I have 99. I have 99 years of experience and I project managed for Noah's Ark. You know <laughs> that was the best joke I've ever Oh, God bless that boy. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that was like, that was one of the best jokes I've heard in a long time. <laughs> Someone needs to hire that. Keep your eye on that boy. Oh, but, but here's something to really think about though. Okay. So like I did this TikTok band video the other day. Um, and a lot of people, a lot of people, I don't think they watched the video. I think they just saw the title. Um, <laughs> But a lot of people literally were like, get a real job. Losers. You're poor. Gravy train's over. And I'm sitting there going, what fucking jobs do you recommend they go get? Because this lady here is applying for the same jobs that a 25-year-old is. Because she's a loser. I'm being sarcastic, but... Hear, hear this out. This is kind of a, this is a big issue here. And it's not cool. I'm 48 years old. I've been living on this planet for 48 years. I've been in Massachusetts most of those years. Uh, it's expensive here. I own my own home. I work a full-time job in lending. For the last five months, I have been looking for a part-time job for weekends and evenings. I have sent out a dozen resumes practically daily. Um, and I mean, I've applied from like the local dispensary to Filene's to other lending jobs. Nobody's even calling me back. I've gotten like a couple interviews here and there. Um, I've gotten a full few full-time job interviews, but that doesn't give me more money. That just replaces the money I'm already making. I need more money because I went through my bills. I can't afford food. Single mom, elderly father living with me. I can't afford to feed my family. American dream, people. Go team. So that's kind of like a big issue, okay? <laughs> like, just think about it for a second, all right? Like, that lady owns a house. She has a career in lending, big industry, and she needs a second job. The same job that you're recommending, you know, like people just, like, I just want to say like this, I'm not naive enough to think since I'm doing okay in life that everyone else is just fucking skippity doo -dah, skippity day. You know what I'm saying? And I don't necessarily have a solution other than working two jobs because that's what I had to do. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. That's my big advice. But this was like one of the comments. The gravy train is over. Get a job, TikTokers. It's like, okay, do you want to give up your job? Like, that's kind of the fucked up thing that's going down right now. And uh, I don't know how much longer this is all going to work out. But, hey, you know, fuck it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to enjoy this gravy train. Uh, just something to think about, though. Just. He's right. Like, TikTok or YouTube or any of these jobs, whether you think they're real or not, okay? Um, it, it, you can make fun of anybody for their job. And that's kind of another big issue where I'm, I'm looking at it like, I don't care what job you got right now. If it re pays remotely well, then fucking hold on to that fucking thing. Look at this one. People who work at pizza shops make more money and have more job security than half of the people I know. They also work harder than most corporate workers. All right, that's a stark thing. But this like person got like shamed for working at a pizza place. Just like the TikTokers are getting shamed for being TikTokers. And just like people who comment and go, I work 65 hours a week, manual labor, and these fucking TikTokers make more than me. Yeah, you should be mad about that. I'd be a little pissed too. And that's why I think it's so funny where it's kind of like if the jobs don't make sense, then what's the fucking point? Anyways, it's tremendous. I, I love it. Makes all sense in the world. 
I, the guy at the pizza shop probably does have a lot more job security than a lot of us because corporate America is in decline. Big tech is having layoffs constantly. We all see the videos and the LinkedIn posts about people not being able to pay their bills. Like shit is rough out there. But you know what? People are always going to want to eat pizza. Pizza's delicious. It's also inexpensive. So yeah, the, the guy at the pizza shop probably going to keep his job for a while. You know what else we need to stop doing is applying moral value to jobs because it's it's weird and it doesn't make sense because labor is labor is labor is labor. Your job isn't any better than mine because you sit at a desk sending an email and I have to work in someone's home being their nanny. Like it, person at the pizza shop is doing a job just like you're doing your job, Hope, when you get on stage and tell mediocre jokes. <laughs> Oh, I just thought this one was funny. Uh, McDonald's and other big, big brands warn that low-income consumers are starting to crack, just like the comment from the beginning of this video, all the poor people need to get real jobs. Yeah, well, <laughs> at the rate shit's going, we're all going to be poor, including that guy who made the comment. I know. Inconsiderate. But the, the restaurant thing, though, this is something that's kind of trippy. Check this one out. This one uh, was sent in by Su uh, Sue Ann. Uh, Sue Ann Jeffords, nice name. Uh, it goes, I'm 64 and worked as a waitress in the late 70s and when it was able to pay my rent, pay my bills, buy furniture, buy clothes, pay for my car insurance, and still have a bit. Yeah. So I put that in there because I was in the restaurant business a long time, right? Um, long time, like a decade. The bartending, waiting tables. Um, and it was funny, though, that that job, even in the 70s, still held up with today's standards. Like, think about that. Like, the people that are, like, saying, um, I, I hate to keep bringing up TikTok. I'm just making a point here. But, like, the people that are like, yo, TikTokers, get a real job. I've had the same thing said to me about bartending. But it was funny because when I was bartending, I was making sixty to $75,000 a year. So, like... Statistically speaking, there's a high probability that that person who left that comment, I'm not saying they're poor or don't make a lot of money, but statistically speaking, I'll probably was making more than him. So imagine somebody telling you that you should get a real job, but yet the real job doesn't pay as much as the fake job. Anyone? Right? <sighs> you need a hit after that one? I know. Confusing. It's, it's, <laughs> it's awesome. This one, AI Storm goes, $25 an hour isn't much, and eventually $50 an hour won't be. Thanks to the government and the Fed policies, the dollar valuation only goes down. I know. And this is another one that I think is funny from Brooklyn. goes, I went to school for four years, excellent degree, ended up waiting tables, and then finding my career in sales and finance. Silliness. Yeah, get a real job, Brooklyn, you dumb bitch. I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. All right, let's keep it moving. Market is so bad that people aren't even going back to full-time work anymore. I was scrolling on LinkedIn earlier, just kind of catching up on things, and I'm seeing a lot of people talking about how they're just choosing to freelance. Freelance or contract work, not even creatively, like cleaning houses, um, like making websites, you know, Uber Eats. And get a real job, get a real job, get a real job. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm sticking up for the everyday person because I am an everyday person. Cool. Anything considered contract work. They're actually making more money doing multiple part-time jobs than picking one full-time job and like getting underpaid and overworked. I never thought I would see that in our society where people are just so over it. Obviously there are people getting hired, but like there's also a lot of people that are been searching for like six months to a year and they just don't want to deal with it anymore. It's the endless interviews. It's the endless rejection. I mean, it gets really tiring after a while. If you don't have a job, got laid off or you're unemployed right now, are you like pounding out job interviews? Yeah. So this is what I want to say, because for most of my life, I've had two jobs. I never had to really struggle though. Because I was able to make good money with two different jobs. And not just two jobs making $12 an hour. No. I'm talking bartending at night, working another job, or doing a side hustle. And then, and then I'm just bringing this up to give you guys some context here. I worked full-time for myself on eBay, which I'm working for eBay, right? Right now, I'm doing this full-time, but I'm working for Google. So really, I don't actually have my own business. 
It only appears that way. So I'm still working for somebody. Okay, get that out of the way for a second. But it's funny because this is one of those things where it's so unfortunate. It really is because I've been here. I'm with you guys. I've been in the trenches most of my life. All right? Um, <laughs> seriously. And uh, it's crazy to think that I was able to do better by having two jobs than just one career. Like, think about that for a second. And most people who have, like, a good career, tell me if I'm tripping. How much overtime do you do? Type it down. Okay? Your overtime is equivalent to someone like me's extra part-time job. Cool. But to answer this lady's question, and this is something that I did about seven years ago. I drove for Uber one time when uh, my job was looking a little iffy. So I went and just did Uber for about four or five months. Um, and, uh, it, it, but this guy had a great point because a lot of people are doing, you know, DoorDash, Grubhub, Uber Eats, all that shit, right? But the problem with that is, is the gravy train, right? Get a real job loser. Um, the gravy train for that is kind of over unless you do Grubhub or Uber Eats. You let me know if I'm tripping, but like this guy says here, he goes, the gig economy is not something that should be used to fall back on like a safety net. That should be government programs, which we did a whole video on this, the whole video on welfare, okay? Um, welfare is at an all-time high, and all of you poor losers need to get, I'm sorry, I'm just going to keep joking around. I'm just joking, guys. I don't actually think that. Some other guy thinks that. Um, the gig economy is an exploitive industry that has eroded over a century of employment protections. When you do gig work, you assume all the risk. You drive your own car, put your own safety at risk, and can be deactivated at any point. And then he also brings up taxes and all that stuff too. And I never really uh, looked at it like that until I was putting this video together. Like I said, I don't actually work for myself. I work for YouTube or Google. When I did my resale business, I worked for eBay. But think about this, right? Okay. Even something like this, you feel like you're working on your own. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, is it's becoming harder and harder to even, um, one, get a fucking job that pays well. And then two, even to like own your own business. A lot of us think we're like owning our own business, but really we're not. If that makes any sense. It's kind of awesome. And plus, let's be real. Uber and shit don't pay that much. This guy goes, yeah, it's bo uh, the gig economy is booming for immigrants. It really is. Every time I get an Uber now, like they never speak English. I mean, someone's got to do the job. kind of get it. Taxi, taxi cabs were always like that anyways. Let's be real here. All right, we're going to switch gears a little bit. Let's talk more about careers. Awesome. Cool. From home. But I don't believe they can have a career from home. Who says we want a career? She was saying she doesn't believe people can have a career from home. Cool. I mean, I don't know about you, but for someone who did the high school to college to career pipeline that was force fed to us basically by the older generation. And now that we're working and we've seen the other side, I can't help but look at the work that I do, the job that I have as a literal business transaction. Not to mention that that pipeline she just talked about doesn't seem to be working too well for most people. Just saying. I provide a service and my employer pays me for that service to literally be able to live my life because life is so damn expensive. And so this whole career narrative, I'm done with it, you know, because it's like, why does everything have to be infinite growth? Why does everything have to be exponentially greater than it was before? I actually really agree with the, everything she's saying, like, hear her out. Can't we just plateau and be okay with where we're at? Like, just because this company is chasing infinite growth doesn't mean I have to. It's happening already. I thought that was wonderfully put. I mean, seriously, think about it. And, and then, like, I get a lot of younger cats say, like, Gen X and boomers and all this shit had it made. But really, the truth is, is this infinite growth beyond the ether, you know what I mean? Um, it's kind of backfiring, and not just on us, the younger generation, but it's backfiring on all these people who had it really easy. Um, the retirement crisis has officially begun. Awesome. How many of you like think about retirement and go, <laughs> I 
good one. I know. Ready. A lot of people have been predicting this for a very long time. The retirement crisis is now among us because the baby boomers are starting to retire. Uh, a recent study showed that a one third of all people between the ages of 65 and 69 retirement age have had to go back to work. Uh, a lot of them are going back to work because of financial problems. Uh, also, uh, remember in the past you had things like pensions that protected people from themselves, forced them to save, and now those pensions are not there. People are leaning on their savings in the 401ks that's not enough and so basically uh this is going to be a crisis that's going to continue to grow it's also something where i'm just warning you if you're younger you got to save and you have to live below your means or you're going to have problems at retirement anyway guys i'm gonna get out of here okay we're gonna end on this note this one was hilarious it goes the real luxury is living below your means and this chick was talking about she has a corporate job but she keeps her bills as low as fucking possible i'm right there with her Make as much money and live as cheap as possible. Um, but I put that in there at the end because I just want to say, as somebody who has been put down most of his life, not put down like I let people walk all over me. No, 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 no. That's not how this works. What I mean is, is since I was a bartender, a waiter, a reseller on eBay, a fucking YouTuber, right? Right, guys? My whole life, I've heard get a real job, right? Go to college. Do the typical. Um, and like this dude Matt Bowler says right here, he goes, I didn't go to college. And that's one of the smartest things I've ever heard. Same here. Who would have who thought that, I w that, that we would be sitting here saying, I am so glad I didn't go to college. So that's all I'm trying to say. If you have a job that pays you well or two jobs that's paying you good, fuck what anyone says about that shit, okay? Uh, that's that's kind of what I wanted to get across in this video. And uh, good luck out there because I'll be real with you. When I was looking for a job before this was doing well, um, it was extremely difficult. Extremely. It, it was not cool. Like I said, the job I was working before this, we were a restaurant. I knew the guy who owned the place. He offered me the job. The job before that, I knew the owner. I knew the managers. I walked right in. Uh, but the short time, about two years ago, where I was applying for places, not cool. <laughs> Anyways, hell of a talk. Shout out to all my Patreon members. You guys leave your thoughts. I appreciate uh, everybody watching. Anybody new, if you like the goods, you know, you had a good time, consider subscribing. No pressure. Uh, but you leave your thoughts. And um, I'm just saying, I'm kind of, I've dealt with the judgment um, like my whole life. Like, get a real job. Dreamer. Bullshit. Uh, but the truth is, is there's literally no job security anymore uh, for the most part, from what I can tell. So, uh, honestly, all the rules are out the window and um, nothing makes sense anymore. So, don't be afraid to play by the new rules even though I'm not quite sure what those are. God, solid stuff. Good shit.